Hi everyone, it's Rax bringing you an awesome guide today. This is going to be the Hammer of the Ancients endgame guide for the Avatar of Zir. It's actually kind of a crime. I haven't actually made a Hoda Barb guide this season, and I should have um, because it ended up being pretty much the best build in the game along with Ball Lightning. And in fact, for the Avatar of Zir, Hoda and Ball Lightning are the only one in S tier, and we think the only build that might be able to compete with them or overthrow them is Poison Tread, which we're going to be covering at at, on our next video. So this is written by Snail. Snail's one of my super longtime great friends in Diablo. We got many rank ones in Diablo 3 together. I think he's one of the best players ever. So sh big shout out to Snail for everything here. Let's go through the avatar of Zir Endgame Guide. I'm going to go through a little bit more on this video than I did in the Ball Lightning video because I didn't make a video on it before. All right, so what's the basic idea of Hammer of the Ancients? You run around and you activate all your shouts and then you just give them a big bonk with hammer of the ancients and this attack can do hundreds of millions of damage so while the ball lightning sorcerers are tick 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 a zillion times for a million damage photobar just walk in and go big bonk and everything dies so when you're going through and you're building your barbarian kind of the same thing that you're doing on the other classes you're looking for your critical uniques that make your build work so the first thing is the Banished Lord's Talisman that drops off of Duriel. This is going to give you mega, mega overpowers. And this is essentially the reason why Hoda became so powerful this season. Um, we really underestimated the changes that Blizzard made to the overpower formula. And honestly, overpower is, well, it's overpowered. And Blizzard has admitted this in BlizzCon in the separate interviews with the content creators, they're very well aware that overpower is way too strong. They're probably going to nerf the crap out of it in season three, so we might as well enjoy it while, while it lasts. So we have the Banished Lords. It's going to give us mega overpowers. And then this Tusk Helm is pretty much unique to Barbarians, and it's while you're berserking, um, you have a 60% chance to become even more enraged. You get increased damage fury per second and cooldown. It's a godly helmet, especially because it gives you extra fury, which gives Hammer of the Ancients more damage. Um, another thing that's godly about this helm is it gives you damage while berserking. There is a Paragon node, which gives you a massive, massive boost with damage to berserking, which is Blood Rage. And you're going to be pumping as much damage with Berserking as you possibly can on your Barbarian in order to deal as much damage as possible. That's why you see damage with Berserking here, and on your ring, and on this ring, and on this weapon, and on this weapon, and on this one, and on this one. The connection to that Paragon node is why it's so important. And the final thing that usually goes in the pants slot is Tibalt's Will. You've probably seen this if you've seen the guides. This is on pretty much every single build in the game where you evade through and you get 40% increased damage and it has tremendous synergy with Metamorphosis, the, the vampire power. And it's just, it's just insane this season, so almost every build takes it. So now we go to the Avatar of Zir. And the Abattoir of Zir is the super end game that's like beyond Nightmare Dungeon 100. And we're asking ourselves the same questions that all the other classes are going to ask. How do we cap our armor? And how do we max our resistances? And how do we stay alive? Once we've solved that problem, then we build everything else into damage to see if we can clear all 25 tiers. So, um, Snail's setup here is very, very good for everyone. It's a very, very defensive setup with a very, very high quality of life at the cost of losing some damage. So he's going to drop to Balt's Will. So you can pick up the pants and take Disobedience here. You would take Disobedience no matter what. So you actually pick up this one, the 20% reduced damage from the generator. So you pick this up. And then also he's opting to not take the Varshan ring, which would again give you additional damage to take the two shout rings. This is going to keep your shouts up all the time. And this is going to give you extra fury while your shouts are up. So the quality of life and the defense on this setup is fantastic and will be good for pretty much everybody. And then the rest of it is just for damage. This is just more damage. Hammer the Ancient's power for more damage. Something for overpowering. More damage. Now, this power is very cute and a very interesting idea. So the entire, what we need to do is we need to get armor caps, as we explained earlier. And there's good news from what we saw in the Blizzard video that we 
uh, the Blizzard demonstration of the Abattoir of Zir. And what we thought is that level one would start one monster level higher than level uh, Nightmare Dungeon 100, which it did at 155. We thought it would increase by one every tier to finish at 179 monster level. If that would have came true, then that would mean that we need 15,000 armor in order to be capped. Luckily, though, we don't think it scales that way. We think it's one monster level for every five Avatar of Zero levels, which would end up the monster level being about 160, which brings the armor cap down significantly to like 13,700-ish, mid-13,000 somewhere. So how do we get 13,000 armor? Well, the answer is with you need disobedience and you need the armor roll on the chest and there is a way you can potentially keep to bolts which i'll show you later but if you drop to bolts you can just take the armor here and a bunch of reduction and you're going to stay alive and you're going to hit the cap easily the interesting thing about berserk ripping which is what we were talking about is the fact that it makes everything bleed and gives you attacks what you need to do is you need to get 60 attacks in four seconds and that's going to allow you to maximize disobedience to hit the armor cap it's very easy for ball lightning to hit 60 times in four seconds it's not that easy for other classes to do it this berserk ripping is a super cute way to do that um, when we look at the skill tree you take uh lunging strike some setups drop lunging strike for something like iron skin you could make that switch if you're a very advanced player, but for most people, I would just advise that you keep Lunging Strike. I'm going to keep Lunging Strike because not only is it for the Fury Generation, but it's also for movement. Hammer the Ancients to get the huge smash. This is why the extra points of Fury make you do more damage because of Furious Hammer the Ancients. And then from here, we're just going to take all the Shouts. One thing that I would recommend, Snail mentions that you can drop Swiftness for something else. I would recommend that you do that. I don't think you need the 12 movement speed here. I would pick up um, the challenging shout that gives you fury on hit, and I would also pick up the multiplicative damage when you war cry around six or more enemies, and then I would cap booming voice. So I would respect these three points. Other than this, I think this spec is a mirror image of what I have. And the gameplay is very easy, which I'll show you here in a second when we go into Diablo. I have this character fully built. Um, you just spam all your shouts and your ultimate, and then you just hit him with a big smash. And when you're out of fury, you just generate it back with lunging strike. And if you keep Tibalt's will in, you're going to use evades to not only do more damage, but also generate your resources. I think this setup is very, very good for the beginning levels. To get started in the Avatar of Zero, you're not going to be able to be killed. You're going to have a very high quality of life. Then when you get to the end, when the monster HP is scaling so high, I think you might have to throw back in Tibalt's Will and the Red Ring to get the extra damage to try to get it down. The Vampire Powers, um, there's actually a couple of them that are pretty damn good. Remember, if you keep Tibalt's, you probably need Metamorphosis and Prey on the Weak. Probably going to need to keep those to keep the vulnerable up all the time, depending upon how long the monsters live. Blood Boil is, makes a lot of sense because we overpower all the time. Um, Undying and Resilience are going to keep you alive. And then Sanguine is nice because we have a lot of Fortify, which is going to give us critical strike chance. And Hemo is another way to proc your disobedience. You're hitting all the enemies every four seconds. Not sure how much damage it'll do in the Avatar, but it's just a way to keep up your disobedience to keep your armor capped. In the Paragon board, it's all about pumping the the brand new glyph that you get in the Avatar of Seer. This is going to give you a gigantic amount of multiplicative damage, and it has a gigantic radius. When you get to, when you get it to level fifty, the radius gets even bigger. So then you're going to be crushing everything, and then you just run around and pick up some of the best uh, glyphs possible and a couple of the legendary nodes. Um, like Bonebreaker, which is going to give you more overpowers, and Blood Rage, which we already talked about, which is going to give you more multiplicative damage based upon how much Berserking you have on your character, which is where you're going to pick all of this up at. Okay, I think I've covered pretty much everything, so let's jump in here and let's see what this Barb can really do. The a question you might have is, what do you do if you have Uber Uniques? Well, the answer is you pretty much put them on. Doombringer gives you 41% extra life. 41% lucky hit chance to chance to heal 5% of your life. It's a huge sustain there. 
The grandfather, 108 to all stats, 84% damage, 4,500 life, critical strike damage uh, times 100%. Pretty sick. If you got a Shaco, you throw that on as well. I don't have one. In fact, I need a better helmet. This Tusk Helm sucks. Um, but I'm going to show you the Tibalt's Will and the Red Ring setup, the higher damage one, um, with a little bit less quality of life. You can see, just like the guy, don't forget this, on my ring, I have damage with Berserking. Weapon, damage with Berserking. Here, damage with Berserking. Berserking, Berserking, Berserking. Make sure that you take that. So, um, and also here, since I'm taking Tabalts, I'm going to take the Metamorphosis and I'm going to take the Prey on the Weak to keep them vulnerable. So you want to evade through them. Okay, we've got all of the Vampire Curses up. Activate your Shouts and Big Bonk. Oh, 100 million. Easy. Oh. And uh, yeah, keep your Evade up and you can hit for hundreds of millions of damage. That's pretty much all you're going to do. You're going to walk around, keep your Evade up. And then, uh, I don't know, hit him for hundreds of millions of damage. One thing to pay attention to here is notice with my Tibalt's will on, with my 60 stacks, I've got 12.3k armor. That's not good enough. It needs to be like mid-13,000, right? Thank God it doesn't have to be 15. So the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to wear an Iron Skin Elixir. If you've been doing Hell Tides all season, hopefully you save these Elixirs. This armor up by 900 with the Disobedience should be plenty to get you up there. Another thing you could do is you could take out all of these, some of these resistance gems and you could potentially use an Elixir of Magic Resist. Increase all of your resistances by 25, which lets you take some skulls here. And that would also work. But pretty much this is the gameplay. It's not too hard. You activate all your shouts and you run in and you just give them a, a big bonk. And uh, you are going to win. It's going to be one of the highest damage outputs in the game. And all the bleeding going on from the berserk ripping on the gloves is keeping my disobedience at 60 stacks to keep my armor up. This is uh, definitely one of the strongest builds in the game. It's probably one of the most user-friendly builds. Barbarians are pretty tanky. I'm, they're never going to kill me. They're never going to kill me with my Doombringer and my grandfather. Even if you didn't have them, you would be able to stay alive. You'd be even more immortal if you had a Shaco. I don't have one. And then if you can get the Melted Heart, you can actually become immortal. But I'm sure Blizzard is going to nerf that. They're not going to allow you to be immortal in the game. So you can 100% guarantee there's going to be some kind of nerf there. And I actually end up with over 30,000 life um, when I have it all built out. So uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this guide and this helped you. Barbarians are my favorite class. I'm so glad to see them at the top. Um, we'll see how far they fall with the overpower nerf next season, but that's not now. Right now they work and right now they destroy. So get in there and enjoy it. And if you have any questions, stop by the live stream. I will 100% be playing this in the abattoir and I will be trying to clear level 25 in solo hardcore. We'll see if we can get it done. Thank you.